Welcome back. Uh, so this is another video where we're going to be working on the 1974 MGB GT, aka Badger. Uh, we've got lots of parts to put in today. Uh, we've got a new cap. We've got new uh, wires. We have a new condenser. Uh, we already put the coil in, the new spark plugs. Uh, we've got uh, points to put in. Uh, I've got uh, at least one or two other things that I'm going to throw at this car. Uh, we're going to try to get a good solid spark out of it. Um, this is what we call throwing money at a problem, uh, but uh, these things need to be changed anyway, so I look at it as kind of a preventative maintenance, if, if you want to say so. If I'm buying something that's a little redundant, uh, you know, as shown, I tested the coil before, and the coil worked fine, uh, according to what I read online, but I went ahead and replaced it with an epoxy-filled coil by Bosch. That's going to be a little more reliable and something I don't have to worry about it breaking down the road. Because so far, all the parts in this car have been original that I've been taking out. So, I mean, it's the original distributor cap. It was the original coil. Everything is stamped Lucas. Uh, parts that I did get uh, ordered through Napa. I'll include a list of the parts that I ordered in the description below. Uh, but um, some of the parts are actually made in Great Britain. Some of the parts are made in Mexico. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get those in the car right now. So, without further ado, here we go. And we're back. So we've got all our work done so far. What we did was we went ahead and we replaced the condenser, the rotor, the points, the cap, the wires, and we previously had new plugs and new coil. Uh, so everything is new-ish, <laughs> at least trying to get the ignition system up and running. I also went ahead and changed, let's see if we can get that, yeah, this guy right here. Uh, the old plug that was on there, when I went to go and plug it, was, uh, oh, hello, there we go. Uh, it just came out, and this was looked like it was put on separate. This looks like this might actually be like an original part. So I figured, you know, that might have been a weak point too, if it literally just ripped out as I went to go unplug it. Uh, and it was pretty nasty on the side of here. Other stuff that got replaced, so these are all the old parts. Uh, this is the old rotor, and let's see if you can tell inside of there. I'm going to try to... Nope, it's not going to... There we go. But that's, that's pretty grody on the inside of that. And that is the original Lucas part. You might be able to see that on there. But, uh... This is the condenser, which might be original too, not sure. Does not seem to function. I think this is the main problem that we have. Uh, but there's also something else which I'm gonna mention here in a moment. So these are the points. Uh, and the points I cleaned, I didn't sand them or anything, but I cleaned them down good and I used contact cleaner. Uh, but they were super caked uh, in between here. Uh, it was like this just fluffy powdery stuff that had built up. Uh, and this is what came with the new points. And let me focus on that so you can read it. All right, so it says when installing point set, make certain that the coil and condenser leads are placed between spring and insulating washer. They must not be placed under the nut or the steel washer. So when I took off the old points, and I have a picture, I'll try to find that, uh, this stuff was in the wrong order. And I'm wondering if that was causing some of the problems. So uh, I guess it's possible this may not be bad, but I'm not going to take a chance. Uh, this is the ignition system. I want it to work every time. So I went ahead and replaced everything that I need to replace. Now, funny story, um, you may recall at a time I said, uh, when I'm not working on the car, I disconnect the battery. Which I, I keep disconnected whenever I'm not working on the car. Last time, when I was working on the car, I forgot to disconnect the battery. So, my battery is completely dead. It's just, it's zero. Um, not even enough to turn the indicator light on the dash. So, I am going to have to run out and get a proper charger, because the only charger I have... Hello, rookie! You can be in an FM. You just want to go outside. You just, you, I'm going to let you outside. Be free! He is absolutely obsessed with whatever's over there. There's been lizards. He, he just, he loves it. So, alright. 
But this is all I have to keep my battery charged right now, and it's just a battery minder. Um, it's mostly designed just to float and maintain once the battery is uh, fully charged. So I've got that hooked up in the back right now. Um, but anyway, so that's where we're leaving off. I got to uh, go out and get a proper proper charger, so I'll pick one of those up today, get the thing charged, and hopefully uh, later on tonight I'll be able to give it a test fire and see if we're getting some better spark out of there. I'm curious to see if those points light up. Um, but and after that, I'm going to properly time the car because I learned something else, and I don't know if it's going to be visible from here or not, but I was told that there is a yellow mark on the, the bottom crank and either the, the base of the like underneath the car or something like that but anyway I saw a video online that shows how to find top dead center on the car with the proper uh, degree so I'll fiddle with that oh man look at that that thing is just that's like grounding wire it looks like yeah that might need to be changed that is rough looking so alright Anyway, lots of fun stuff to do. I will uh, give you guys the results later. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.